what's the good word Josh your boy DKB here so uh, we slowly keep getting minor pieces of information from how OTAs went getting leaked out for uh, players that we haven't heard much about think about Max Mitchell um, Elijah Vera Tucker all the undrafted free agents uh, some of the defensive linemen um, uh, I want to call them games were really positional work in terms of working on their get offs uh, between guys like Bryce Huff and Jermaine Johnson, Michael Clemens, all of the transformation stories. And uh, one that's quietly went by is Zach Wilson. Right. And to be honest, this is exactly how I would love to see not only the preseason, uh, but the regular season, ideally the playoffs as well go by where Zach Wilson quietly uh, kind of fades into the background, right? And this isn't necessarily a bad thing for the way his career arc has gone. You want him not to be in the limelight, right? He doesn't have to worry about, um, uh, you know, practicing what he's going to say for some of these media press conferences that are going to come up, post-game commentary, uh, trying not to make his guys or himself look bad, uh, as we've seen over the course of the last two years. And so uh, much like the plan was from the coaching staff when they rebuilt this, uh, at least the offensive portion, this is a complete reset for Zach Wilson. And so at least according to what we got from the OTAs, Zach Wilson, um, and, and this is per Zach Rosenblatt, uh, is said that they just liked what they saw from Wilson during OTAs and the coaching staff went into the summer with more confidence. Um, the new environment he's working in will pay off. So we've, I, we've, we've integrated a lot of key pieces for Zach Wilson this offseason, right? For starters, just so we have an idea of how bad it is in case anybody's been living under a rock, Zach Wilson has been compared statistically uh, and, and of course, fi uh, on film-wise to Jamarcus Russell, who's famously known as probably the worst quarterback in NFL history after being a top pick. So uh, what we've seen from Zach Wilson over his career so far just over 4,000 passing yards, a 55.2% completion rate, more interceptions than touchdowns, 67 sacks in just 22 games, which basically guarantees you three sacks a game, 6.4 yards per attempt, uh, and a 70.9 quarterback rating uh, over his 22 games. So it has not looked pretty by any means whatsoever. But with this coaching staff that we brought in, I know a lot of people – point to Todd Downing as maybe the biggest, um, uh, I guess, coaching uh, addition that they didn't love, uh, and probably that's centered around a lot of his DUI, but when you go back down memory lane and you look at his coaching history, he's done very well in not only uh, reviving careers to some point, um, but definitely getting the best out of a lot of people. And I would argue that really the only project he's failed in was his time early with the Raiders with uh, Derek Carr. Um, outside of that, uh, you know, his most recent work, Ryan Tannehill, was a thing of beauty. That MVP-like season that he put up was definitely one that had me very, very excited. Um, and so, you know, bringing Todd down again, knowing his history, being able to coax uh, um, elite, I won't say elite, but definitely above average performances for the most part from some of these quarterbacks that have already either been cast aside um, or or they're not highly touted, um, you know, maybe not round one caliber quarterbacks and different things like that, I think speaks volumes uh, for Zach Wilson. And then, of course, the main head uh, of this snake here, Nathaniel Hackett, and I look at him, even though I think he could put together great game plans to accentuate what his quarterbacks can do. And I take a look at his Jaguar days uh, with Blake Bortles, uh, who was a guy that had a lot of immense physical tools. <clears throat> but either mentally things didn't come together or from a mechanic standpoint, um, you know, things just weren't quite right. But even then, one game shy of the Super Bowl uh, with a guy like Blake Bortles. And I want to say it was his rookie year, if not definitely his sophomore. Um, you had a guy like uh, Leonard Fournette over there. Um, but it's not like they had, uh, you know, top five players uh, that they were working with. Definitely a very strong elite defense. Uh, but offensively, there wasn't a whole lot. So I have highly value Nathaniel Hackett's ability to put together effective rushing plans to limit hero ball, which is a lot of where Zach Wilson struggled. He wanted to do too much when the offense was floundering instead of working within the foundation and what we wanted to do to attack the defense. Uh, and then, of course, 
by by uh, extension of having that effective running game, then he's able to put his quarterbacks in a much better position where they can feed off of the play action. They can feed off the running game uh, that's been getting going. They can pick their poison with how they want to attack the defense out of there. And you just get into more of a comfortable mindset and frame. So I love that setup. We do still also have... Um, Rob Calabrese, he hasn't gone anywhere, still the quarterback's coach um, from what I can see uh, on the New York Jets site, so that'll be interesting, but I would imagine even though he has the position, he's very much so probably playing a, a backseat role. I know the last time that we heard from him, uh, he talked about uh, uh, what an experience it is getting, re- getting to have a guy like Aaron Rodgers in the building and learning from that guy who's essentially a coach in the league, uh, as well as an elite player with how much knowledge he's been able to ascertain and, and, you know, utilize and disseminate that uh, to not only the coaching staff members around him offensively and defensively, but of course his teammates as well. So love the whole plan. I do think it's working, of course, uh, you know, feeding purely off what Zach Rosenblatt gave us from OTAs. Uh, I know personally with some of the things that I've seen, there were a few practices that were rough. Uh, where Zach Wilson still seemed like he was having some trouble with the defense. Uh, Of course, with our secondary, that shouldn't be too shocking. Uh, But then you also heard about elite days uh, where he had very strong red zone portions as well as seven on sevens. Um, And then just days where he was on target with his passes. And for the most part, I would say if we come out of this, uh, the end of this season and we hear that his accuracy has greatly improved, I think that would solve a whole lot of issues just then and there, right? Um, uh, between the accuracy and the mental miscues, uh, him be, his almost inability to read the defense and how they're attacking him, um, I, I think those are definitely the biggest struggle areas. So we're not going to cure everything in one season just because we have a Hall of Famer in front of him, just because we have this new coaching staff that's in place. But He seems like he's feeding off of the energy. He talked highly of this coaching staff already, uh, speaking volumes about how he's learned as much playing quarterback this year as he has at any point uh, previously coaching and with the previous, uh, excuse me, in college and with the previous staff uh, before, um, you know, Nathaniel Hackett. So I'm very pleased. I did, uh, I remember asking a question in Bleacher Report about, let's say things tend to go fairly well for Zach Wilson, right? Things are quiet on all fronts, uh, but as far as we know, there's improvements being made. Let's say we get to the point in the end of the season where we lock up, play, lock up the playoffs early um, and maybe we're not quite able to compete for, uh, or, or maybe we're out of the running uh, for uh, number one in the AFC to get home field advantage. Um, let's say we lock this up by week 16. I want to say that'll give us three games. Um would you consider playing Zach Wilson? Uh, he's going to be the primary backup as far as we know, unless for whatever reason he loses the faith of this coaching staff. And then you have to decide on if you want Boyle uh, or maybe an external force to come in uh, and move him into that third spot. But nonetheless, I, I think it's worth it. I, I don't know. Every bit of experience he can get at this point will definitely help. And it'll be nice to see some kind of tangible proof about where his progress has ended up uh, after uh, essentially a full year, right, of working with this new coaching staff. Well, a decent amount of time, right? I don't want to oversell it, but uh, it'll be nice to kind of see where he's at uh, by the end of the season as opposed to what we seen last year when he was getting pulled for Streveler. So um, I would say yes, but also I wouldn't be upset if we uh, didn't showcase him whatsoever. I think the biggest concern will just be, uh, again, if we end up getting that one and done type situation from Aaron Rodgers, which uh, I'm getting more of a vibe that we might actually see him for two years. Uh, if we have a lot of success, maybe three. Um, but uh, yeah, a- again, keeping an eye on the future as well. Uh, the primary motive here is definitely going to be for this coaching staff to feel comfortable with Zach Wilson being able to go back and take the reins. So at some point, we're going to need to see him. But if that doesn't happen until next year, I have no problems with that whatsoever. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Uh, Zach Wilson, stock seems to be rising with the coaching staff. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Zach uh, Wilson still the key uh, or the future of this New York Jets franchise anyways. And uh, I'll catch you guys again.
Peace.